Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have another work with me video here for you today. I am going to show how I do my aquarium press on nails. So this is actually part of a set that was sold on Etsy. I have a first time buyer who purchased this aquarium set for me. And so I figured while I make her nails, I might as well make a tutorial out of it. So starting off here, I had already base painted one hand, sort of done the initial preparation and the base design so that I could show you all of it on the other hand. So here I am using a primer and a dehydrator. These are from McCart. Any primer, any dehydrator will do though. I actually kind of like these ones because they don't smell bad. They have like a nice scent to them and I'm going in and I'm buffing that primer in to the surface of nail tips that I've already filed down. So I've already shaped them and I do that just so that the gel will adhere really well. Now I'm going in with a base coat. This is the Beatles base gel. I do use the Beatles base gel and top coat. I think they're really great value for your money. I am looking into trying out some new base coats and top coats. So I will be shopping around for some more of those. I really want to try Evie from Long Hair Pretty Nails, her base and top coat. I know she just recently came out with a set. So if any of you have tried it out and have thoughts on it, I would love to hear them down in the comments. So I'm just laying on a nice thick layer of base coat. I use the E-Nail Couture tips for my aquarium nails. I think the shape is really good for aquarium nails. They don't have too high of an apex, but they still have room to do the technique that I will be doing. These tips are also very strong, so I don't have to worry about adding a ton of extra strength to them, but I do go in with a nice thick layer of base coat just to make sure that my polish is stick and also to give a little bit more strength. After base coating all of the nails, I'm going to go in with some milky white polishes. I have two here, the Yadada. I don't know how to pronounce it, but the one in the teal bottle here, I believe I actually got off of Timu. I will try to find the link and put it below. I'm starting with that one because it is a lot more opaque than the doughy milky white color. I do like the consistency of the doughy better. I think it gives a more even coverage, but I go ahead and I start with this one so that I can get a nice base layer down that is somewhat more opaque so I don't have to build too many layers. Then I'm actually going to go in with the doughy on top of it to even out that color. As you can see here, it is just slightly streaky, but again, it is very good for the price, but I will go in with the doughy later to make sure the color is really even. Now I'm using Born Pretty's color 36. This is also a semi-sheer uh, jelly sort of color in a blue. I'm putting this on the pointer and the pinky finger, the middle finger is going to be the aquarium nail. So I've left that out. You want to pick nails that are slightly larger for the aquarium feature, just because then you'll have more room to put in embeds and those sorts of things. So I tend to pick either the middle finger or the thumb finger for a set that has an aquarium accent nail. Those just give me the most room to work with. So I'm going in and I'm doing a layer of that JN36 from Born Pretty. Now I'm going in with, this is actually layer two on all the nails. So another layer of the Yadada Milky White and then another layer of the Born Pretty Jelly. This is just a really nice blue. I wanted a bit of color to serve as the backdrop for the glitter pigments that I'm going to be adding on later. So it's okay if this color is a little bit sheer. I really like mixing my own glitter gels. I ordered a bunch of pigments off AliExpress that I will link below and I'll talk about a little bit more later on in the video, but I do find it's nice to have a matching colored base for those pigments. That way, even if there is like a little bit of sheerness to the glitter pigments, you'll have a nice even color underneath to show through. So now I'm just going in here and I'm checking the coverage and I'm adding on that layer of the doughy nudie white polish. Again, I really love this polish. It is a bit more sheer though. So I laid down the Yadada first and now I'm adding a thin layer of this to just make sure that color is really nice and even. 
I am such a big fan of these semi-sheer jelly polishes, the milky type polishes. I just think you can build up so much dimension with them because they have that slightly see-through nature. I don't know, they look a little bit more natural to me. I'm not sure what exactly it is, but I love the semi-sheer look. So now I'm gonna go in and I am top coating the white nails. You want to use your favorite top coat for chrome because these nails will get a layer of Aurora chrome powder on top of them. Cure for just 30 seconds for the nails. You want the top coat to be cured, but still slightly have almost like a stickiness to them. It's not exactly a stickiness, but there is a little bit of grab when you cure a top coat for only 30 seconds or so about half the curing time suggested, and that will just really help the chrome powder stick. I've also seen a tip that if you over cure a nail, the top coat, you can go in with some alcohol and just wipe off the top and the chrome should stick better then as well. This is just a really cheap like chrome package I got, I think off of Timu. I will try to find it and link it, but I find it's really nice for it if the chrome is not like the main design, and you want just a duo shift color, these actually work really well. So I'm going in here with the blue and I'm just gonna cover entirely the thumbnail and the ring finger. My favorite way to apply chrome is with the little sponge tip applicators, just the little eyeshadow sponges. I've seen people use their fingers. I think that works well too. I also just ordered a silicone applicator to try. It looks exactly like this little makeup applicator here, except for it's made out of silicone. So it's supposed to be reusable, washable, all that good stuff. So I'll try it out and let you guys know what I think. I got it off of Timu. But for now, I'm gonna stick with my little makeup sponges. So after putting on the chrome, I go ahead and top coat once again. My recommendation is have a separate designated top coat for your chrome application. That way if you do get any little bits in it, it's not going to affect any other sets that you make that do not have chrome. So this one here, as you can see, is running a little bit low. So I have one of those handy little nail polish stands that allow me to get the last bits of that top coat. Now I'm going to go in with a thin liner brush for 3D elements. I find having the right type of brush is really important. If you want really long lines, really thick 3D lines, you want a longer brush that can pick up more of the gel. A thicker brush too is also good, but if you want thinner lines, if you want thinner 3D elements, then a really skinny, possibly even a shorter liner brush will serve you even better. So I'm going to go in here and I am going to lay down the shell design. So I'm using the Jin B Crazy Thick Non-Wipe Top Coat. I love this stuff. I think it's amazing for 3D designs. It is very, very clear, very little yellowing when it cures, and it's got the perfect consistency for doing 3D elements. So I'm going in here and I'm putting a lot on my brush and then I kind of make sure that most of the product is almost dripping off the end of the brush before I lay it down. Then if I am not super happy with how the shape looks of the line, I'll go in and I'll add gel where I think it needs it before caring, and I'll just reshape the lines as needed before I give it a cure. Sorry, off frame again. Still trying to remember to stay on frame. I swear that is the hardest part of any nail artist who does content creation is trying to make sure that you're constantly in frame. I did get new glasses though. So I did just go and update my prescription. So hopefully that means that I can see a little bit better what I'm doing and I'm not always pulling the nail up right close to my face. So here I'm just reshaping those droplets, adding a little bit more to the edge of the line where I want the bulk of that gel to sit. And you can actually clean up your designs too before carrying with this gel because it is so viscous, because it does stay in place so well. So sometimes I go in and I just clean up any little bits that are out of place. 
Now I am doing the 3D design on the thumbnail. Again, going in with that same liner brush, the longer side of it, and laying down quite a bit for this line because I wanted it to really stick out at the top end. One thing I've learned with 3D work like this is if you can lay down your initial line in one solid smooth stroke, it is going to make your 3D work look a lot better. If you can get the whole line down in one, that's good. And then you can always go in and add bulk where you need it. But I wouldn't suggest trying to do the line in multiple parts. I think you really need to get that initial shape, that initial direction down in one, then go in and add bulk later. Really, the less that you fidget with your design, the better, because even though this gel is really thick, it still can run a little bit. So try to get the line down as smoothly as possible from the get-go, add your bulk as necessary quickly, and then go ahead and cure. And that's the thumbnail done. Now I'm gonna go in and show you how to do the aquarium. So you want some sort of nonstick surface to sculpt on. I use these little sheets of plastic, I will link these below as well. They're like little plastic sticky notes. And I take that same nonstick top coat, the thick kind. I use a spatula that's mostly for poly gel. And I lay down a really thin layer here. That is the length that I will want for the aquarium tip. With this method for aquarium nails, you will want to measure how much the nail bed is going to take up of the tip and mark where the nail bed ends. Then you're going to line up the tip using that little marking and making sure that the edge of the backing that you've essentially just made out of gel is aligned with that mark. So once you have it straight, go ahead and cure it and it should just pop off just like that. It's really important that you want to use a thick non-stick gel for this. If you use a sticky gel, then the inside of your tank is going to be sticky and your decals will stick to it. So I'm going in here now, I cut off the excess at the tip and I'm just adding an extra layer of strength to the backside. I find it's easier to sculpt the back of the tank thinner at the start and then add strength. It just comes out a little bit neater in my opinion. Now I'm gonna go in with the McCart Gem Grip Glue. This is also nonstick formula and it has a great little nozzle here that you can see will get right into the crevice between the nail tip and the edge of the back. I do this to reinforce those edges and make sure that there's no leakage. Now I'm going in with the McCart Sculpting 3D Gel. This is also nonstick and I'm going to create the bottom of the tank. So this has, again, a nice nozzle here that lets me get in really close and just lay the product down right against the edge of both the nail tip and of the back of the tank that I created. Now I'm just cleaning that up a little bit with a brush and some alcohol, making sure that that tank is very neat and tidy before curing. And then you go in and you file the heck out of it. You want to make sure that the shape is as close to the original as possible while still retaining strength. Then I use one of the eyebrow spoolies to just clean out any dust that got on the inside. And now for my favorite part, which is actually filling the tank. So I pulled out a selection of metallic charms and some little crushed stones here. I pre-plan and pull out just the charms that I want to use. Once you start filling the tank, it is kind of a non-stop process, so you don't have a lot of time to like fidget with things. So I pull out exactly what I want to go on the inside. I've made this design before, so I already knew what I wanted to include, but it's always good to include a mix of like flatter sequins or metallic cutouts as well as some 3D elements like these little gems here or the pearls. Now to actually fill the tank, I got this syringe. I think it was just off of Timu, I'll link it below. And I used Johnson's baby oil. Doesn't matter what kind of baby oil you use, you just want a clear oil. Oil is going to suspend the inserts better than water will. I would not recommend using water. So I just filled the syringe here, just a little bit, you don't need a ton. I clean off the tip and I set it aside and I'm going to insert the heavier inserts first. These ones don't need the oil to move around, so you can go ahead and put those in. 
before you add any of like the metal cutouts though or sequins like I'm going to in a minute, you do want to add a little bit of oil. If you don't, they can get stuck to the sides and then they won't move when you do put the oil in. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of oil just to get things moving around. Then I will go in and add that really cute little mermaid metal cutout and some sequin. One tip I have for doing aquarium nails is don't overdo it. You want enough in there that it's going to show and be fun and have movement, but you don't want too much. If you fill up the tank too much with too many things, you're going to lose some of the movement in there and it's not going to have the same effect. It's just gonna look a little too cluttered. Last but not least, I decided to add a couple of these little metal caviar beads. Then I'm going to fill up the rest of the tank. You really want to go almost all the way to the top. Leave a little teeny tiny air pocket at the surface, but you do want to try to get pretty close up to the top there. You don't want too much of an air bubble. And then this next step is pretty important. Once you have your oil in there. You want to take a lint-free wipe, make sure it has a little bit of alcohol on it, and you want to wipe off the top edge of the aquarium tank. If there's oil all over the top, when you cap it, your gel is not going to stick to itself, and then you'll have leakage. So make sure you wipe the excess oil off the top, and then you want to use a non-stick thick gel to just seal in that top. Now, here I'm using that 3D Carve It Up gel. I do like it, but it does have a bit of a cloudy appearance as you can see here. So when I filed it down, I didn't love the way it looked. So I actually went in and redid the aquarium tank nails here with just the Jin B thick top coat to cap them. I'll show you the comparison later. I just think it looked a little bit more clear, but for now I am going in with that same jelly blue number 36 and I am painting over the portion of the nail that will sit on the nail bed. This will help cover up that line where the tank starts. So I do two layers of the jelly blue, as you can see here, and I make sure to get right up to that line where the tank starts, hear that, and then you are ready to decorate all of the nails. I didn't realize how intricate of a design this was until I sat down to actually film it. So this is later, I took a break. Now I'm pulling out those pigments that I was talking about. This one is a really pretty blue kind of green gold shifting pigment. I'm going to mix it here with some top coat. Now, again, the reason I love doing this myself is I can adjust the amount of shimmer that goes into it. I can mix pigments if I want. This here, it's really nice on its own. So I just mix in pigment with the top coat. I got myself one of these painter spatulas. It's a metal one, which means it cleans off really well and it mixes super easily. So I would strongly recommend getting yourself just a painter spatula for mixing your own custom color. I also find it tends to leave fewer air bubbles in the polish than say a brush would. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna paint over the blue portions of the nails. I think I should have added a little bit more pigment because it did take me three coats of this, three thin coats to get the coverage I wanted out of the glitter. So in the future, I'll just add a little bit more pigment to the top coat. And that's what's so nice about making your own glitter polishes is you can add as much or as little sparkle as you want. That way you can get the kind of coverage that you desire. Now I will link this pigment down below. I got it from a store on AliExpress. And while I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I picked up like 10 other pigments from the store because they just had the most gorgeous duochrome pigments of all different shapes and sizes. I didn't have like the best customer service experience. The package initially got lost and then I had to repurchase it. And long story short, I wasn't able to get it at the original price that I had paid, but that's okay. They are still really nice pigments. So once I have the pigment on, I'm gonna work on the bubble effect. I wanted these to look like they had actual waves crashing on the nails. So I get a little bit of soapy water here. I just use just soap and I lay down a thin layer of blooming gel over where I want the waves to crack. So I'm gonna do a little diagonal squiggly line on the fully blue nails, and then I'm gonna put a line right across the edge of that tank there. Again, this will help disguise the edge so that when you look at the nails from the top, you don't see it. I do really like the Beatles Blooming Gel. It 
blooms very quickly though so if you don't want a ton of spread this might not be the best for you but i do find if you want a lot of spread it's great I'm just going in here with a white liner because that's easier, but any white polish will do. And I'm just gonna lay down a little wiggly line, let that bloom out, and I do this across all of those nails. And as the polish is still wet, this is important, you don't wanna cure it, you lay down some bubbles over that still wet polish. And you wanna do this quickly because the bubbles will pop. And then I like to flash care to just make sure that those bubbles hold in place so work one nail at a time with the bubbles i like using that same spatula that you use for poly gel for this it picks up the bubbles well without popping them on accident so working one nail at a time i'm just laying down those bubbles and then i'm making sure to stick that right in the lamp or flash carrying it and then you can just use a little lint-free pad with some alcohol wipe off any remaining water, any remaining soap, and you have this really cool bubble effect that looks very realistic. Now I'm going in and I'm doing the same on the other nail. I really like this technique. I think it's an amazing way to make your nails look like you put a ton of effort in when really it is a relatively simple hack. You can basically use any sort of gel polish, lay down a layer, Put the bubbles where you want the effect and then cure with bubbles still on it and it just adds a bit of detail that looks like you put in a lot of effort with actually very little effort and i think there are a lot of different ways that you can take this technique so i've done nails that look like snake skin using this technique it creates a really nice scale pattern almost so very versatile i like this technique a lot I've been thinking recently that I want to show some of my old nail designs and I was considering doing a whole video where I pull out the old sets that I have completed and just kind of do a walkthrough of those, talk about some of the different techniques I've used, some of the different trends that I've tried out. Um, so yeah, let me know what you would think of a video like that. So after laying down the bubbles, I found that I had actually covered up most of the white and I'd lost sort of the nice marbling in the white. So I did go back in and I laid down another line of the blooming gel and just painted a bit more white on the edge. That's the final result there. And now it is time to add all of the charms. So yes, another step. I know this design was kind of a lot. Uh, that's probably why it took me five hours to film all of this. So. Here I'm pulling out the same decals that I used for the inserts of the aquarium nail. I'm organizing what I want to put on first, and then I'm using the Macart rhinestone glue. It's one of my favorites. It has just a really nice little thin applicator tip there, and I'm just going to place all of the gems where I want them. If you don't already have one of these little wax applicator pens, I would strongly recommend getting one. It just makes picking up things so easy. As you can see here, I can just go right into the little holder and pick up whatever I need. I used to use tweezers and that was probably one of the more frustrating experiences that I've had with nail art. So I'm laying these shell metal charms and these really pretty iridescent blue crystals along the waves, almost like you would see seashells washed up on a beach. I'm making sure to use a good variety of the silver and the gold and using some pearls to tie into that beach theme. The nice thing about the McCart glue is that it is quite thick, so you can lay down your stones, your gems, your charms, and they'll pretty much stay in place. You can move them around as needed to where you find the best placement before curing. I think the charms really just bring this look together and it also helps tie in that aquarium nail and make the whole design look consistent. Now I'm just cleaning up everything prematurely because as you'll see, I actually forgot to do the ring finger. That design calls for some more charms at the bottom of that seashell. 
I am going in here and I'm taking a little wipe with alcohol and just cleaning off any of the wax that's left over from the wax picker. That is something that is important to do if you're going to use a wax picker because sometimes it can leave a bit of a residue that cloudies up your rhinestone. And now I'm going in with that Gen B Crazy Thick Top Coat and I am making sure to seal in all of my charms for a nice smooth finish. Again, this is great because it is a non-wipe top coat, even though it has that thick consistency, and it will just add a nice protective layer over all of your charms, all of your decals. I do find that some of the metal charms tend to tarnish when they're put in water, so I wanna make sure that I cover all of those so that they don't show any tarnishing. And then sometimes the pearls lose their pearlescent coating on the surface if you don't top coat them. So I just go in and I cover everything. It also makes sure that none of your hair gets stuck under any charms that have a loose edge. And you can also adjust the shape of your nail if you have any sort of lumps and bumps. This will smooth it right out. One thing I will say though, is you don't wanna overwork this gel too much. Because it's so thick, it does capture air bubbles pretty easily and those can be harder to pop because of the thick viscosity. So make sure that you're laying down the gel in kind of a float layer, working as little as possible with it, and that you're not using the brush too vigorously, otherwise you will get air bubbles. I really like thicker top coats, so if any of you have any suggestions for a bottled top coat that you really enjoy that is of a thicker viscosity that is not too bubble prone, I'd love to hear it. I like the Beatles one, but I have found that near the end of the bottle, I don't know if it's user error or what, it does tend to get slightly bubbly. When I redo these tanks here, the aquarium nails, I went over it with the thick Jinbi top coat and I think my problem was exactly what I had just said, which I actually overworked the polish and it ended up being really bubbly. There was a lack of clarity, especially in the tip portion. So because of that, I did go back in, I remade both middle fingernails and instead of topping it with the Gin B, I just used my thick Beetles gel top coat. That way there were fewer bubbles and I had better clarity in the tanks. I'll show you that at the end. But now I'm realizing I forgot to the charms on the ring fingers. So I'm just pulling those out and I'm going to adhere those really quickly. Same method, you just lay down the McCart rhinestone glue, put on your charms with that wax picker, Make sure that you wipe off any residue. I like having a little flashy lamp for curing those into place before giving it a full nuke in your bigger lamp. And then I'm top coating here with that Beetles gel top coat. Again, you wanna make sure you seal all this in so that you don't get any tarnishing. And I'm also going in and top coating the back of the nail just in case while filing it had developed any scratch marks. At this point, I do my final filing of all the nails, just making sure the edges are nice and crisp, and then you are done. So here I'm comparing the ones that I remade of that aquarium nail. As you can see, the one on the left is a lot more clear, fewer bubbles, you can especially see it here on like a dark black background. The one on the left is also a bit skinnier and it doesn't have the cloudiness to the top of the tank because I use a Gin B thick top coat instead of the McCart sculpting gel. So overall, I'm really happy with how this set turned out. Here's the final look. Since this is a set that I sold as press-ons, I thought I would just show my packaging process for anyone who wants to see. So I make sure that my sets are all filed down and ready to go. I pull out my packaging materials and I use one of the Enel Couture wipes. These are the Luxe brush wipes, but I find they work really well for making sure that any last bits of dust are wiped off of your nails. So I just give every nail a good wipe, make sure they're dust free, fingerprint free too. I wear gloves when I make press-ons to avoid fingerprints, but you know, in case there are any smudges, I wanna make sure all of that is gone. 
And here I'm just admiring those aquarium nails, showing you some of the movement. Out of all the designs I do, I think aquarium nails are one of the most satisfying. Seeing everything move inside a tiny little nail tip just gives me so much satisfaction, a lot of joy. It's the little things, you know? So once I go ahead and wipe off all of the nails, I then take these little sticky strips, double-sided sticky tape, and I place that in the case. Now, I was ambitious here. I thought that perhaps I could fit all of these nails into one case, so I had originally laid down a strip on the top and the bottom. I go with my tweezers and I peel off the backing here. That can be a little difficult, but once you get under a corner, it's easy to just peel the rest off. And then I attempt to go in and put down the nails. I realize my mistake here. If I try to fit them all into one case, then I am going to have the back of the aquarium sitting right up against that sticky tape. I don't actually want that. I want just the two edges of the nail to be stuck to the tape. If you leave the flat back of an aquarium tank stuck to double-sided tape, I find it's pretty hard actually to rip off. Um, especially if it's left over a long period of time while it's shipping and whatnot. So I did decide to do just one set of nails per case. I'm going in and I'm ripping off that tape here. This stuff is great because it really doesn't leave a residue, which is why it's nice to use for these sets. So starting over, peeling off the backing, and then I'm going to place the nails in where only the portion that is not the tank of the nail is sticking to that tape. Again, I just don't want the tank stuck to that tape because it is a bit harder to pry off because it's a fully flat surface. With the way it's laid out here, you just have the edges of the nail stuck to the tape and they're a lot easier to take off and reuse. And that's one hand done. Now I'm going in with the other. What I use to actually pick up the nails is just a little decorative spoon that I got off of, I think Timu. And on the tip of it, I have just a little bit of putty, the same putty that I use to stick the press-on nails to my little magnetic nail holders. It just means that I don't get any smudges or fingerprints on the nail when I place them in the case. And here they are all packed up. The last step for these little packs is to add my custom stickers. So I, I did go a little wild. I purchased some custom stickers from Vistaprint. I was ambitious, you know, I, I bought a bunch, but I thought it just made the packaging look a little bit nicer, a little bit more um, luxurious, I suppose, and a bit more personalized. So I go ahead and stick the stickers on both cases. I know my prices aren't exactly cheap, and that's just based on the amount of time it takes me to make a set, even so I think I'm still underselling myself sometimes. But because of that, I want to make sure that I use nice packaging and give whoever receives the nails a good experience when they open the order. Here's my prep kit. I include enough for two separate applications for both methods, either with sticky tabs or with nail glue. So everything that you need to apply the press-ons is included. And then as just a fun little extra, I do have these cute little stickers here. I got a random mix of animals. I pick out one that I think is cute. And I also got a mix of axolotl stickers. I love axolotls. I don't have one. They are hard to take care of and they're endangered, but I love the look. They're cute little salamander type creatures. So I stick in two stickers. And then two of my favorite candies. These are high chews. They're like Starburst, but better. Those are just some fun little treats to come with your nail set. Then I include my instructions card here. I do have a place where I can write a personalized message, which I'll do later off camera. I do go ahead and wrap everything up, including this set of one, two, three, go nails, just as a little freebie since this was this customer's first order with me. I had a bit of tissue paper for extra protection and then I will stick in that card later once I've written my message. So yeah, 
here's the final design here's the whole nail look i really appreciate you guys watching i've received so much love on my channel recently i can't thank you enough and i'm really excited to make more videos for you let me know down in the comments if you'd want to see that nail tour please check out my other videos for more hauls and tutorials and subscribe if you like my work but i will see you all next time thank you bye